Hello everyone, Trix here, and welcome to the finale of Super Castlevania 4. It's a little bit risky to call it the finale already, I know. But I also know how many stages are left, and therefore I think I'm not able to cut this up in two episodes. Not without them becoming way too short. <laughs> and therefore, I also don't like to waste any time. Let's move on with stage A. We know we are in Castlevania, that Dracula himself is not too far anymore. And I was saying I was trying to go fast, but this cock does not really allow me. <laughs> oh, remember these kind of rooms. The clockwork mechanics and these clock towers. Known from Castlevania 1 and 3. And a little bit in 2. <laughs> they also return in this game. Because we have reached the clock tower of Castlevania. Which we're going to use to climb up to the level where Dracula's personal tower is. So be careful for moving platforming mechanics. Because that is most of all where these cocks are for, of course. It's going to prove tricky. So that is hopefully not going to be a problem for tricky tricks. <laughs> because of the SNES memory and therefore the controls being a little bit more sophisticated, I think these mechanics actually work a lot better than the NES games. Oh! <laughs> what the hell? Since when is that a thing? <laughs> I cannot say I agree. <laughs> uh, sir, I think it's a better idea to kill you beforehand. <laughs> Where were we? Before we were rudely interrupted by jumping skelly mans. <laughs> Oh, uh, be careful for these kind of cocks. The moment they're actually attached to each other. You can actually get stuck between them. And yes, that will kill you in one hit. So be careful. Just like in NES games, that actually is still a thing. Man, the slowdown. All these moving things in the stage is kind of overflowing the SNES's memory, it looks like. <laughs> but it seems we are done. At least with the slowdown room. <laughs> Back to horizontal platforming. Oh, you're a bone thrower. And also a jumper. <laughs> and we know now that jumpers are pretty dangerous. <laughs> there we go. In this case, a sub-weapon was a better idea. Medusa heads. Should not be a problem. Oh, we need to duck here. That's obvious. Ooh, even the grappling points start moving now. Stage A is proving to be the stage of the moving platforming mechanics. <laughs> Thank you. Next room. Not the next stage, apparently. Still A1. This game also uh, clearly making use of a hexadecimal counting system. That's the reason why the stage is called stage A and not stage 10. Oh! <laughs> I kind of forgot about these things. <laughs> and the moment you don't expect them, then they can scare you quite a bit. <laughs> yeah, falling cocks. Not a fun idea. <laughs> Let's try in all that chaos to also finish my story. About the hexadecimal system. The SNES actually making use of a hexadecimal system. The whole reason why it's called a 16-bit system, of course. The 16-bit counting system always works 0 to 9 and then A, B, C, D, E, F and only then the next number in the memory is actually called 1, 0 the equivalent to 10 you might say also applies to the 8-bit system of course on the NES and similar 8-bit systems back in the day all of the counting actually worked with the oh okay I lived somehow <laughs> I wasn't expecting the screen to not scroll with me but uh, good to know the moment you actually move up uh, you cannot go down anymore the screen scrolls one direction here <laughs> so be careful and also be careful for hexadecimal systems I think we've talked enough about that this let's play is becoming way too technical now <laughs> let's just talk about gameplay as it should be Trying to explain why this stage is called stage A and not stage 10. It's taking way too long already. <laughs> Let's just go up. 
crumbling blocks, so be careful. If you're not fast enough, there's no way up again. Since you can't respawn them, because we just learned the screen only scrolls one way. <laughs> Respawning is not an option. Let's move further up. Let's see what these candles actually have. Oh, screen nook. Making easy work of the dragon head. Which is not per se a good thing, because that's why I can't tickle him. <laughs> and we've reached the top. Okay. Interesting room. Still did it. Oh, now we're at A2. Moving outside again. Nothing but skelly mans, including a couple of red ones. One bar short of full health. <laughs> oh, here's the boss fight. Kind of unexpected, but here he is. And remember this guy. Also a returning boss. The Mummy Man. And he comes equipped with his traditional bandages. Which can throw you off the stage. <laughs> but luckily, this is actually a pretty good place to checkpoint. You don't have to move back very far. See, we're here again. He even got our level 3 whip again. <laughs> Let's try that again. Oh, that's a way better place to spawn, actually. <laughs> that way, it's harder for you to actually knock me off the stage. Because I'm pretty sure I can out-damage you. These wrappings actually don't hurt a lot, so... Oh, thank you. It would be nice if you actually stayed there the whole fight. <laughs> whip, 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 whip. <laughs> Okay, it's probably going to end now. Yeah. This might be a little bit of an annoying spot, so I think I need to tickle you now. <laughs> Even make short work out of the fire orbs he's trying to shoot. See, I told you this guy was easy. Oh, let's not go here. <laughs> he also goes here. <laughs> a way to attack and a way to defend. The tickle move is the most awesome thing in this game. <laughs> I still think it is. However, I'm going to finish you with raw strength. Let's whip you up. Still got pretty much all of my health left. Would be nice if I was able to say this was first try, but <laughs> unfortunately, no. Second try, because he knocked me off once. But still, success. And that was stage A. A lot shorter clock tower than we're used to. Especially the one in Castlevania 3. But it is our route towards stage B. And it looks like that is going to be the final one. Indeed. It will lead us to the bat symbol on the overworld. And no, it's not going to be Batman waiting for us there. <laughs> Even though it should be. Way more cool than Dracula. Even though Dracula can be considered to be a true Batman. <laughs> oh, Batman Let's Plays. Why are you not a thing yet? <laughs> Uh, this is scary, but I think this should be safe. Yeah. You're platforming downward anyway, so don't really have to worry about endless pits. The screen will always scroll with you. So the biggest threat is uh, potentially landing on enemies you cannot see. Falling into a pit should not happen at a part like this. Unless you fall here, of course. <laughs> because going downward to the next screen only works when you're on the staircase. You can't fall through it. That does not work. Castlevania 1 rule. <laughs> Let's cross this bridge. Which is pretty easy if you keep looking forward. <laughs> I wonder if Simon's realizing what is happening behind him. <laughs> Let's just keep going. Don't want to stop for too much candles here because, as you can see, they do gain up on you. And getting hit by the bats is not per se the problem. <laughs> Let's just get rid of you. Thank you. Uh, nothing back here, so let's move on. This should be it for B1. Yeah, indeed. B2. Oh, this music, man. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I wasn't ready yet. <laughs> okay, now I'm ready. Apparently you cannot wait too long. But as you can see, this is a forced auto scroll. There's a giant... Circular spiky friends below us, that will actually force us to go up here quite quickly. 
And the staircases do too, because uh, they will also crumble. So you can stay on them for too long as well. Forced auto scroll. With the awesome music. <laughs> Go away, Rockman. This is not a Mega Man game. <laughs> Let's go. Candle. Oh. I think it's not a very good idea to stop for a candle there. <laughs> Zero lives, so I need to be careful now. Never mind. <laughs> oh. Oh, survive. <laughs> oh, the blade is already catching up with me again. I really don't like the scrumbling stairs. They really uh, trip you up. Literally. <laughs> and I know this is possible. Oh, I missed that one. <laughs> yeah, see? You just need to make sure you don't do it too high up. Then it does not work, apparently. Then you can't really connect to the next staircase. But we are back in business. Let's continue. I've not lost a life yet, so... We're golden. At least for this part. Not just a heart. I was expecting something better. Come on. Let's not waste more time here. Oh yeah, this part. This part can be really tricky. Because there's spikes on ceilings here. On these platforms, as you can see. Since these things move up diagonally, it's sometimes really hard to avoid them. Oh, ah. Yeah, that was predictable, right? <laughs> One more try. Should know the pattern now. First they appear over here, so we can pass through there. The next set is going to be on the right, so we need to be on the left. Yeah, that's how it works. Let's move on. The platforms disappear here, as you can see. Only to reappear here again. <laughs> oh, more spikes to the right. Safety on the left. Don't lose your head, sir. Hey, I see you sniping me. <laughs> you deserve the tickle death. <laughs> Get rid of you. Nothing on the wall. Nope. Well, I have not seen the circular blade in a while, so... When it comes to our pace, we're doing fine. And this will trigger the next diagonal flying platform section. <laughs> Gotta love it. Definitely worth a party. <laughs> okay, let's be serious again. Let's move on. Wasting too much time here. Which, as you can see, we have more than 900 seconds for this stage, so... <laughs> it's kind of promising that this is not a short stage. Stage B. Um, there's probably something valuable in there, but I can't quite reach it now. <laughs> so I'm not going to bother. And what do we find in here? Ooh. This looks ominous. This looks like final boss area. <laughs> sort of. Because it's not the final boss, but it is definitely a boss. A pretty fun one, in all honesty. Something that belongs in a Metroid game. <laughs> Luckily, this guy always flies upward the moment you hit him, therefore temporarily getting rid of him. Which you can use to get to the other side of the room. Just make sure to stay crouched and far away from this explosion, because his projectile will explode, as you can see. And that way, the pattern to this guy should be relatively easy. He looks very intimidating at first, but he's in all honesty not that bad. The second phase is more annoying, because he attacks you directly then. Just stay far away from him, make use of the range of your whip, or your sub-weapon. And even this phase should be relatively easy, if you know the pattern. Just handle it like this. Move away as far away as you can, so he cannot reach you. But you can reach him, like this. That is it. Okay, um... Okay, no matter what, I'm going to need this meat. Badly. <laughs> and you don't have to worry. The first three candles will actually always be meat. So even if you have only one bar, like me, <laughs> it will always fully heal you. 
as you can see. So you're always going in full health to this guy. But first we need to face this demon. That we know is the final form of the first Dracula fight in the first Castlevania game. Nice little throwback. Before we actually face the man himself. You can block his shots by whipping, so you don't even have to crouch. And this fight is actually really easy because of it. However, there is a second phase. And now his shots actually become a little bit more hard to avoid, so stay away from him. If he starts using them. Because he does always point him downward. If you stay far away from him, you should be able to dodge them pretty easily. And he does not even land anymore in this phase, as you can see. So, once again, easy boss fight because of the easy pattern. There we go. That should take care of him. <laughs> well, it is pretty clear. Dracula does guard himself really well in this game. A lot of sub-bosses actually before the real man himself. And we're still not done with that. First let's heal up, because of course there's going to be more meat. And then it's up to the next guardian of Dracula. <laughs> There's indeed another one. My favorite boss of all time in Castlevania. <laughs> Here we have Death. He also appears in this game. He's luckily not as bad as in the first game or the third one. This one is relatively easy, like in the second game. As you can see, he does not fling around a whole lot of scythe this time around, which is definitely his most deadly attack. <laughs> and now he actually throws his big scythe. Which will also have a sucking effect, as you can see. It sucks us to the right. <laughs> it's easily avoided. You can even get a few strikes in if you feel like you get a chance. <laughs> yeah, if he starts moving again, then he's at his dangerous. So be careful. Not going too well, in all honesty. <laughs> ah, yeah. Of course I died to him. <laughs> I should have known. Even though he's easier, as in Castlevania 1 and 3. He's definitely harder than in 2, so... Never claim this guy is easy, he's just easier. <laughs> oh, come on. Really bad start. As long as you use this attack, I can get a lot of strikes in, because this way... Because with this attack I can at least ensure that I avoid everything. <laughs> that is definitely his most easy attack. Oh, thank you, he's using it again. This is my chance. To make up for the bad start. Bam. Stay away from him because he's going to fly now. <sighs> Still get hit. <laughs> Ooh, awesome. Oh, of course it didn't last. <laughs> hey, this actually works. Oh, be careful. <laughs> Ooh. Barely. <laughs> but barely counts. And still two extra lives. So. Facing Dracula should be possible. All the torches light up. Ominous walk towards the man himself. Stage B4 is the final boss of this game. Dracula. The fourth time. <laughs> Let's see how much meat he has for me. Because otherwise I technically only have one extra life. <laughs> Not being full health. Yeah, I don't think this is going to last for very long. But might as well try. We're here, so... Dracula will awaken once again. Be careful for his orb shots the moment he appears. It will actually split up, so use a tickle move in order to block it. <laughs> and as per tradition, to hurt him, we need to hit him in the face. Like this. But you can, of course, also jump over them. Like this. Also still works. If he spawns far away, and you don't really get a chance to whip him, you can always use a sub weapon. Like the cross that you get before the boss fight. You can also use that, of course. And that way the first phase should be relatively easy. Because of the predictable pattern he uses. 
Also be careful for him spawning right inside of you. <laughs> oh, he changes up his pattern now. I don't think I like this move. <laughs> okay, luckily the flying orbs don't stay around. And now he starts using his flame attack. And that one's a lot harder to dodge. Yeah, for that attack you're going to want to be full health. <laughs> I rarely avoid all of them. But it is pretty clear what he will do. He will summon two flame walls, which will actually entrap you. And then the flames itself will start flying around. And if you actually take them out, they will plummet to the floor. Also giving them an opportunity to hit you. So that's definitely a very annoying attack to avoid. You're going to want to use your health bar for that. <laughs> if you know what I mean. This first part, that should be relatively easy. This part you should be able to do without getting hit. If you even want to remotely stand a chance in the rest of the fight. Yeah, like that. Did get hit once already, so... I'm already not feeling too confident. Too far away, so cross. Thank you. Okay, here comes the homing attack again. Oh, that left quickly. <laughs> Thank you. I'll take it. The less damage that attack does, the better. <laughs> okay, this part is annoying. Always make sure you're heading in the same direction as the flames the moment you try to attack them. Because that way you can actually make sure they plummet before you. Here comes another one. Bam. And bam. Yeah. When they're still high up, you can try to duck under them. Like this. Okay, I have this. This pattern has been overcome. Now it's just a matter of performing. Uh, I don't like this attack. Go away. <laughs> oh, now what? He will get ready to summon his most deadly attack. The lightning strike. Very hard to dodge. <laughs> oh, yeah. As you can see, the moment, the moment it appears above you, there's no way you can avoid it. Actually, you need to get lucky here. Keep an eye out on the top of the screen, where they will form. Luckily there's no other attacks, so the moment he appears you can easily hit him. Just worry about the lightning, and not about him. And so awesome that the best music in the game actually starts playing now. <laughs> right at the end. Getting really lucky with the pattern here. And there we go. The game was nice to me in this final phase. <laughs> I'll take it. And that way, light will break into Dracula's little room. Something he cannot stand. However, the light and the tickling does not work against this final one. Hmm. Perhaps there is more later on. <laughs> but the game is complete at last. We stand, looking over our triumph. There goes the castle once again. Time for the credits. See you after them, people. Enjoy.
Presented by Konami. So, and with that, we have finished another game. Another Castlevania game. Like I mentioned beforehand, the very first one I ever played. And therefore, my point of reference for this series. Still a game I really like. Even though, I think, gameplay-wise it's a little bit of a downstep compared to the third game. There's a little bit less possibilities. A little bit less stages. <laughs> Therefore, also the project became a little bit shorter. But for me, it still remains my personal favorite. That is usually what the first experience in a series does to someone. <laughs> this is also an example of that. But that said, we are far from done with the Castlevania series, of course. 
There's still plenty of more games. Looking at a couple as we speak. <laughs> I'm not going to give away quite yet what my next one is going to be. Because there is a couple of gaps in the series. I must admit this is not a series where I actually own every single game. Around this time were of course also a couple of Game Boy games that released. And those I actually still do not own. I do plan on actually going after them. But currently don't really have the time to play some new games. So have not really come around to it yet. But that kind of proves I don't have every single game in the series. And therefore after this one. The final uh, installment of the classical Castlevania series you might say. How it got started. I can actually use... As an excuse to say, the next one is going to be a secret for now. <laughs> But I can already give away, there is indeed going to be a next one. This is not the final Castlevania game on this channel. The next game I'm going to play, because with this we conclude another weekend project. Next week is going to be a new one. And to keep things interesting, I'm also going to keep that one a secret. So with that we have closure on another project. Hope you guys enjoyed. Hope there's a way to actually play this game with modern consoles. I'm not really sure if there is in all honesty. I'm not too sure if Xbox or PlayStation actually currently hosts this game on one of their more modern consoles. I can't really say that for certain. But if that is not the case, then I can say right here. Nintendo, please bring this game to Nintendo Switch Online. <laughs> that would solve that problem pretty easily. But even if you can't play... Here's the project, you can see how the game works, how it looks, and what is all involved with it. So, thank you all for watching once again, and see you in another project if you feel like clicking anything else on this channel. You are welcome to do so. <laughs> see you folks next time, wherever that may be. Treeks and Simon Belmont, out. <laughs>